There's a church in the valley by the wild wood. He made me nervous today, didn't he? Uh, that day's coming. Any yeah. yeah. anniversaries? Right, let's continue with the work. Okay. Morning, church. Good morning. My apologies for the bulletin this morning. We'll try to get that corrected um, and have that back to normal size next week. But it's just okay. about. It's, it's okay. okay. You can see it, right? <laughs> just have to. Hopefully, as I asked Brother Jim, you got some readers in your glasses, right at the bottom. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully everybody has those in. If you have some glasses, um, have to strain our eyes a little bit. But it is good to see each one of you here this morning. But the most important thing is that our great God has called us to worship Him this morning. And He's done that by His Holy Word. And He calls us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So to you, dear church, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 136 verses 1 through 3. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endureth forever. And our public response to God calling us to worship Him this morning is Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love Thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Let's pray. Father, thank You for calling Your people, setting us apart, and sanctifying our hearts, bringing us to Your house this morning where we can worship You and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank You that Your mercy does indeed endure forever. We thank, thank You that You are good, that You are the God of gods, the Lord of lords. Father, help us not to just thank You with our hearts, but help us to, uh, or our, just our words, but help that to flow out in the way that we live and in our actions and help that to flow out in how we love Your law as we confess this morning that we do love Your law, we love Your holy word. Father, often it is not our meditation all the day, as the psalmist said. So help us to think godly thoughts, to think Your thoughts after You, and to see all things in life through the lens of Your sovereignty and Your providence, that You care for us, that You are merciful to us, and Your mercy is steadfast, that it never fails. It is new every morning. It is exactly what we need each day, each minute, each, minute, each second that we live. Help us to trust in You. Help us to rest in You, I pray. Bless this time of corporate worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scriptural call to confession, as we come now to confession of our faith, and we do this in a variety of ways, as you well know. Our scriptural call to confessing us to faith is Hebrews 10, verses 19 through 24. Please hear the word of our great God. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which He hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, His flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So let's get let's just go ahead and get verse 25. Not sure why I left that out. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, 
as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The day of the Lord draws nigh. The day where we will be gathered together with God and with all of God's people. And the Lord's return is coming. He has promised that return, and though we don't always have faith in that very promise, we should rest and trust in the fact that Jesus is coming again. And when we gather together corporately, we do so to exhort one another. That's one of the reasons why we do so. And why do we confess our faith? Well, it's, a, it's an exhortation to our own hearts and to the hearts of God's people. And it's a way that we worship God according to His Holy Word. So we'll confess our faith this morning, first of all, from the Westminster Shorter Catechism. On the front of your bulletin, and question number 55, as we look at the third commandment this morning. What is forbidden in the third commandment? The third commandment forbids all profaning and abusing of anything whereby God makes Himself known. And we will certainly see that by God's will in the sermon this morning. On the back of your bulletin, you'll find Heidelberg Catechism. And we'll see question number 76 as we continue to work our way week through week um, through the sacramental theology section of the Heidelberg Catechism. Question 76, what is it then to eat the crucified body and drink the shed blood of Christ? It is not only to embrace with a believing heart all the sufferings and death of Christ, but also to become more and more united to His sacred body, by the Holy Ghost, who dwells both in Christ and us, so that we, though Christ is in heaven and we are on earth, are notwithstanding flesh of His flesh and bone of His bone, and that we live and are governed forever by one Spirit, as members of the same body are by one soul. And so what that catechism question and answer teaches us is that when we come to the Lord's table, it also unites our hearts together as God's people. And it reminds us that we are governed by the Spirit of Christ and by the very Word of God. And it should be a time where we gather together uh, and when we come to the table, it should be a time where we do so with great anticipation to not only uh, obey God's command to us, but also uh, to, to draw near to one another and exhort one another has kind of been the theme of the early um, opening part of our worship service this morning. Let us confess together the Apostles' Creed in the inside of your bulletin. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in a holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. These are what we profess and confess to be true according to God's holy word. Let us now bow our heads for a time of silent confession of individual sin. covenant assurance and pardon from our holy God comes from Isaiah 43 in verse 1. As I read this, please remember that the New Testament and the writers of the New Testament epistles and books call the, um, the church of God spiritual Israel. So this is very much applicable to us. Isaiah 43 in verse 1, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. 
In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us praise Him with hymns this morning. Miss Stan will be saying our next hymn, 221. 221. I'll sing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Good help, love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling. In His blessed presence live, ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to, to Him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could have, love lifted me, love lifted me. could help love lifted me souls in danger look above Jesus completely saves he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves he's the master of the sea billows his will obey he your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. could help love lifted me next hymn is 289 289 blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory Salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, with 
whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Well, as has kind of become the norm, the offering plate is in the back of the church on the table back there. So on your way out this afternoon, um, after the service, if you'd like to give of your tithes and offerings, you're welcome to drop that in the plate back there. Lloyd, if you lead us in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You indeed that we can praise You. And as Fanny Crosby wrote so many years ago, I ask that the blessed assurance that comes from your Holy Spirit would be our story, that it would be our song, and that by the promises of your word we would rest in you and trust in you, and we would sing our praises to you all the day long. And we thank you for what you've accomplished on our behalf. And we thank you for what Jesus Christ did and in your sending of your Son and his willingness to come and to die for his people. And not only just to die for His people, but He lived for us. And uh, then He went to that cross after, as we we're studying the Ten Commandments, He completely obeyed Your Word and Your law and Your will and never once violated it as we have done multitudes of times. But that's why He is our federal representative. That's why He is our spiritual head. For it is His righteousness that... Um, declares us righteous before the throne of God right now. And so we're so very thankful for that, and yet His willingness to go to the cross, even though He never sinned, and we understand that the wages of sin is death, and the only reason one is supposed to die is because of sin. Jesus Christ never sinned, so that's puzzling to our minds until we remember that He was counted in our place on that cross. All of our sin and all of our violations against Your commands and everything that we'd ever done, every evil thought, inordinate thought and affection and all the, the wickedness of our hearts was punished and taken out upon the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an amazing thought and perhaps we don't think about that enough. As I have heard one of my pastor friends say, if we just thought about that for five minutes, it would either... Uh, we'd either cause a uh, turn away and, and just not care, or we would just be so overwhelmed. And I pray if we thought about what Jesus Christ did, truly did for us, that it would not uh, bring apathy in our hearts, but it would bring a, a sense of overwhelmment, uh, overwhelmness that Jesus would, would do that for us. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord God, we thank You for the Jesus Christ, our Savior. And, and He is l uh, risen from the dead. We don't just celebrate that on Easter Sunday. I know we couldn't be together on Easter Sunday this year, but 
Lord, really every, every Lord's Day is Easter Sunday because we are celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is alive forevermore. It is He who uh, was alive and then was dead, but now is alive forevermore. And it is He that holds the keys of death and hell. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we look forward to His return. And we just want to say we love you. You first loved us, and we are so thankful for that. Thank you for teaching us to pray using these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we pray, deliver us from evil, we recognize uh, the, the more that we grow in our Christian faith, just how much evil is in the world, just how much evil is, lies within our own hearts. So certainly we must pray that God would deliver us each and every day from evil in our hearts, in the world, and the evil one himself, Satan. Our scripture text this morning is Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 7, as we come now to the third commandment that is in, found in verse number 7. Hear now the word of our great God. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, Thou shalt not make unto thee graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments." Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. The grass withers, the flower fades, but this the word of our great God will abide forever. Amen. We come now to our time of praise reports, prayer requests. Yeah, sure, Adam. That'd be great. Thank you. I'll try Leave the faith and leave the camera. <laughs> I'm going to stand right here in front of you. Is that okay? Right. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, well, do we have any praise reports today? Any praise reports that you'd like to share with the church? If not, do we have any prayer requests that we've added some new names to our prayer list and one that I had received this week from Ryan that we don't have on there. We want to add her today, and she's visited here as Eden Marsh. Eden Marsh will be under that list there. So we'll add her. Brian, you want to do an update on that, wouldn't it? Um, yes. This is a, um, a dear, dear friend of our family. She's like a sister to me, and she has um, come down with the COVID virus, um, and she is really taking a beating from this virus. Even still this morning, her oxygen levels are really low. So we're afraid she's going to have to go on a ventilator. And uh, so um, I, I'm begging you all, if you'll just lift her up in prayer. Uh, like I said, she's, she's like a sister to me. And um, this, is, this is really hard on, on, on our family. So thank you. Some other names that I have added this week and uh, that we have on there. And I don't know why. Ron, Ron Grinnell should still be on there. He's, he's at the bottom under the recovering, but he will be on our upper our upper list too, but he's also at the bottom. But uh, Erlene Qualls, a, a friend of mine at school, uh, Marsha Pauly, some of you know her, Sam and Erlene, she's going through uh, cancer treatment, so I need to remember her. My brother, uh, uh, recurring uh, prayers for abuse. And uh, Clyde Allen, uh, Debbie had said that to me this He's better. I should have done that, but he's doing much better. He's at home. He's good. Good to hear that. And so Clyde Allen's on that. Are there any other in, uh, 
two teeth in the hospital. Uh, supposed to be released today, I think, out and said this morning. Is that correct, out? Correct. Uh, she's having some uh, breathing issues related, I think, maybe related to the asthma, but they're not sure. Is that, is that, is that? Could be heart instead of asthma. Could be heart instead of asthma. Uh, any other uh, prayer concerns that need to be added on this prayer list? And some of you really took care of me last week and gave me some updates on this. Hopefully we got that worked out right. If there's any other names on this list that are not accurate, please just give them just put it on the sheet and I'll hand it to me at the end of the service and I'll get it updated on our website which is kind of what we've been trying to do. Any others this morning? Keith Goffsworth? Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, not Keith Goff, Keith Phillips. Uh, yeah, Tammy, I forgot, I missed put her on there too. Tammy Phillips, some of you know her. I wasn't aware of this and Joe, you may have known this, but I did not. She's been going through cancer treatments of late and so I need to remember Tammy and Keith. Some of you know them and really dear people to the community of Monterey. Any any others this morning? I think we can take uh, Joey Hism off. Yeah, you're right. He was, he was over at the house on Memorial Day and had a memorial picnic with us. And he seemed to be doing real good and back at work and everything. So. Good deal. Thank you for that update this morning. And uh, we had our Sunday school lesson this morning and Jean's still on our list here and I know she's not doing well. Uh, I've still got a lot of aches and pains going on, but uh, she was, her and Mary Jane were both uh, pleased to join in on her, on her, as Lloyd said, out there in Radio Land, I guess. But uh, <laughs> we did that this morning, and it worked out pretty well. So, uh, any others this morning? Uh, yes, this, Mr. Mr. McGill. Clyde Allen, is that, I wonder if that's the Clyde Allen I, I know, I'm a complaint with. Uh, he used to have up on, I think, Grubbs and Mountain years ago. Installs carpet. Pardon me? Installs carpet. Carpet. Mm -hmm. He installs carpet. He builds houses and contractors. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know what the same. I, I don't know. I don't know what he's the same one. Not. Mm -hmm. But he's had two or three marriages. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> 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 well, there you go. <laughs> More than one way to identify somebody. Yeah, yeah. Being <laughs> a record, ain't the only way. <laughs> yes, Miss um, Joe. Please remember Babylon. She's been sick for some time. And had to take a leave from work um, to heal and just remember her. Well, let's remember Bella Covington this morning. All right, any others this morning? You know, we talk about what happened recently and all the demonstration thing going. Of course, I know last week, I heard uh, last night really gave a good talk on it. On we are listening to uh, Judge Janine Piro and uh, on the Fox, which I watch a lot of Fox Network. And, uh, uh, what the person did, you know, but it started out, it shouldn't have been that way, and people calling at it, the man that turned loose, take his, uh, turn him over or something, that was just uh, certainly something that's uncalled for. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, no matter what one's onlookers who watched it, whatever might be done with them, let's still remember that uh, each of them has a soul, mm -hmm. and uh, that God would deal with each other and uh, and they'll where they may be or may go they'll come in contact with Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for that Mr. McGill. Any others this morning? Alright let's bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father we're just so thankful to be here today thank for all the many people who are here. Lord I ask that you wrap your hands around these people around your children in this world Lord that you give them uh, a bubble of comfort to allow them to go out and be a light in this world and to do the work and the duties that you've been given to them today are the task, Lord. And we ask for a special blessing of comfort, of healing of the names on our prayer list, that you will lay your hands on them, Lord, today and help them to heal back in your service as well, Lord. I know we've had several names mentioned uh, over the last couple of weeks. We just ask that you continue to intervene, uh, use, uh, you're the great physician, and we look forward to you for all things. Uh, above us, Lord. And we ask that you'll be with the uh, things going on in the world, Lord, that you will help heal our society, that you will reach down and give them the insight, the wisdom that we spoke of this morning to make the decisions that the Bible has applied to our lives, that it will give them a Christian perspective, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you'll be with us throughout the service and throughout the rest of the day and throughout the week. We love you. We thank you for everything you did for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
We come now to the third commandment this morning. It's found in Exodus 20 and verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. One of the consequences of the fall of mankind is a uh, aura of negativity. Have you ever noticed that it is just really in our nature to talk about bad news? What do the headlines of the newspapers talk about? Most of the time the headlines are bad news, negative things. What does almost every uh, news broadcast lead off with? It's not good news. 99.9% of the time it is bad news. And the sad thing is, it doesn't matter if there is tremendously good news to share. And often there is good news that we could share and that news broadcasters could share. But we just it's always in our nature to lead off with the negative news. I'll give you an example. Let's just say there was a, a, a fishing charter that went out to sea. And they were a couple miles off land. And let's say they had 50 people on this charter. And, and all of a sudden this bad storm rose up. And the, the fishing charter knew that it was going down. It wasn't going to make it. And they called in and, and radioed in for help. And uh, the, the ship went down. And, and everybody was in the water. But the Coast Guard got out there and, and rescued 48 of the 50 people. Now let me ask you a question that evening on the news. What do you think the lead story will be? tragedy at sea. What do you think they will start out talking about? The two people that died as opposed to the 48 that were rescued. Um, you know, it, it's just in our nature to be that way. It's in human nature and that's, that's, a, that's an effect of the fall of mankind. Now in some instances, it is proper and the right thing to do to lead off with bad news. The gospel is one of those instances. Do you know what I mean? Well, Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He, he said Himself, I did not call to, come to call the righteous to repentance, but I came to call sinners to repentance. So in order for people to understand why we need Jesus, we have to understand first and foremost the negative effects of sin and the awful consequences of sin. And then by Christ's Spirit, we embrace Jesus Christ and all that He has done for us. So, in some instances, it is understandable to present the bad news first, but for the most part, we as humans just seem to thrive on bad news. And in these difficult times that we're living in today, we certainly need to hear more good news. And a lot of that is in uh, different people's nature. It is... It is in different people's nature to be more positive, and I'm thankful for those people. I'm not necessarily one of them, but I'm very thankful for them and oftentimes very envious of people who can keep a positive spirit in almost every instance. We need to hear more good news. So as we come now to the third commandment, you might be wondering, what does this have to do with the third commandment? Well, the third commandment is do not take the name of the Lord in vain. And as we often read that commandment and study that commandment and hear sermons on that commandment, it does tend to focus on the negative aspect of that command. But in focusing on the negative aspect, a lot of times we forget to, uh, we tend to forget the implied positive aspect of that command. So let's think about it this way. If the negative aspect is do not do not, that's negative, do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, then the implied positive aspect would be what? Well, we prayed it this morning together as a church. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So I want to make sure that we see the importance of both of those things today, not just focus on how we violate this command, but also focus on how we keep it. So I have two points to make. The first one is the anatomy of the third commandment, and the second one is the application of the third commandment. And in that application of the third commandment, we'll look at how we violate it and how we keep it. But first of all, let's look at the anatomy of the third commandment. You might be thinking, do you have your words correct here? Anatomy of a commandment. How can a command have body parts? 
Well, the third commandment certainly does not have body parts, but it does deal with body parts. Which part of the body comes to mind when you hear this third commandment, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain? It's that little thing inside your mouth called the tongue. That is the obvious answer for how do we use the name of the Lord in vain except we often speak improper words. John Owen, the great Puritan, writes, and I really like what he says, he says, there is not one member of the body that breaks forth more in God's dishonor than the tongue. Let me read that again so it will soak in. There is not one member of the body that breaks forth more in God's dishonor than the tongue. And how true that is. How many times have we violated this command by simply by speaking words that should have never been spoken. And by saying things we never should have said, and therefore in doing those things we have dishonored God and we have violated the third commandment. James chapter 3, verses 6 through 8, that, that chapter that deals with the tongue, James writes these words, The tongue is a fire. The tongue is a fire. James says the tongue is a world of iniquity. <laughs> well, we've already talked about dealing with negative aspect of things. James not too positive when it comes to the tongue, is he? Well, he's not done. Hang in there. He says, For every kind of beasts and birds and serpents and things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed by man, but the tongue can no man tame. I would like to say he's done, but he's not quite done. <laughs> He says, it is an unruly evil, done yet James? Not quite, full of deadly poison. This little instrument that dwells within our mouths today. He says that it is a fire, a world of iniquity. He says it cannot be tamed. He says it is an unruly evil. He says it is full of deadly poison. Now, it always amazes me because he uses the analogy that all beasts and serpents, those things can be tamed and trained. It always amazes me to see how wild animals can be trained and, and can be tamed. And James talks about that. You know, you can tame and train lions. You see those in the movies. A lot of times those are, are, are the circus, right? A lot of times those are tamed and trained. doesn't mean that there won't be accidents. I always say a wild animal is a wild animal, right? But to some extent you can tame and train a lion or a bear. You've seen those in the movies, the big grizzly bears. Those are, those are tamed and trained animals. Now, I personally would not want to be one of the stuntmen to work with those trained uh, and tamed animals because, again, I still don't trust them. And snakes, it's hard to imagine taming and training a snake, but over in uh, Asia they do with those cobras, right? Those things that can inflict deadly harm on individuals. I mean, poison and teeth and, and just they can kill and maim. Those things that can do that can be tamed and trained. But James says this little instrument, this tiny little instrument called the tongue, no man can tame that. The only one that can tame the tongue is the Holy Spirit of Christ. And so we must pray against the evils of our tongues. And we must pray that the Holy Spirit would help us to not take the name of the Lord in vain with our tongues. But we don't just take the name of the Lord in vain by using our tongues. There are other body parts we use, and one of those is the mind. The mind. For even if... A lot of times back there was a time when if someone was caught telling a lie in some countries they would cut their tongue out. Can you imagine that? Now if that tongue is gone that may mean the, the individual can no longer speak words and violate this command with their words but they can do just as much damage with their minds in violating this third commandment. Because not only do we say things with our tongues that hurt our great God, we often think improper thoughts about our Lord with our minds. And I think the mind is also an un, often an unruly evil that man cannot tame. And this too takes 
the work of the Holy Spirit to keep our thoughts from wickedness. To keep our thoughts from blaspheming our Lord. But when we really dig deep down to understand how this works, we find that our tongues and our minds are controlled by the sinful desires of our hearts. That's why Jesus Himself, our Savior, said in Matthew 15, verses 18 and 19, that those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. Jesus is saying the words that we speak, that we use our tongues to speak with, those things are coming forth from our inside, from our hearts. And Jesus says those are the things that defile the man. For out of the heart, Jesus said, out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. That's our mind. Right? So we see right here, Jesus is, is summarizing this very, very cleanly, very neatly. He's saying whatever words we speak with our tongues, whatever thoughts we think with our minds, these things are controlled by the sinful desires of our hearts. Jesus says, out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. The prophet Jeremiah wrote these words. He said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Then he writes that the, the Lord is the one that searches the hearts of all men. For you see, dear church, the heart of man in Scripture really refers to the whole seed of man. And when it refers to the heart of those who are unbelievers is referring to those that have never been born again. Those who have never had their sins forgiven. Those who have never had their hearts spiritually circumcised. For that's what the sign of the Old Testament, that's what the sign of the covenant circumcision was pointing to. Having our hearts circumcised. Having the sin of our heart cut away. That nature cut away in our hearts. The unregenerate man has never had that happen to them. Their hearts have never been spiritually circumcised. They're not, they're not able to love the Lord. A lost man is not able to love the Lord. A lost man is not able to keep the Lord's commandments. So the heart of the unregenerate individual is constantly blaspheming the Lord and that comes out with their words, the tongue, and their thoughts, the mind. The unbeliever is constantly living in violation of this third commandment. But for those of us who have been born again, Christians, we have been freed by the Spirit of Christ to love God and obey His law. And I want you to know, this is the good news. We don't have to live in bondage to the sinful desires of our hearts. We don't have to. Oftentimes we choose to. But we don't have to. The Spirit of Christ dwells within us. This is the positive news that we need to be filling our hearts and our minds with this morning. We don't have to profane the name of the Lord with our tongues. We don't have to profane the name of the Lord with our thoughts and our minds. We don't have to profane the name of the Lord with our evil hearts. But again, as I mentioned just a moment again ago, often we still do that very thing because we still have a sinful nature. But when we do take the name of the Lord in vain with our hearts and our minds and our tongues, we immediately run to Christ for forgiveness. And we pray that the Spirit of Christ would sanctify our hearts and our minds and our tongues. And this is our constant need. It really is. As we pray, Lord, keep us from evil. Deliver us from evil. This is our constant need. We need the mercy of Christ to sanctify our hearts and minds by His Spirit to keep our tongues from evil, to keep our hearts from evil, to keep our minds from violating God's commands. So I hope that makes sense and that's the anatomy of the third commandment. Now in closing, let's look at the application of the third commandment. As I mentioned before, this is really two parts. The first part is how we violate the third commandment, the negative aspect, and then how we keep the third commandment, the positive command, or the positive aspect of this commandment. So first, how do we violate in application? I mean, we talked about it generally, 
We violate with our tongues, with our words, with our minds, with our thoughts, with our hearts, with our sinful desires. But how, let's just kind of, you know, let's kind of get a more in-depth way at some of the different ways that we take the name of the Lord in vain so we can pray the Holy Spirit of Christ would keep us from these ways. Well, one of those ways in which we violate God's command of taking the name of the Lord in vain is when we do not reverence His name. When we do not treat the name of God for what it is. It was said that the Jews in the old days did not even take the name of Yahweh on their lips because they were afraid they would use it irreverently. When we were children, we were, every one of us in here were taught to treat our uh, uh, elders with proper respect. And we were taught to give them the honor that they indeed deserve. And part of that honor was to call them Mr. and Mrs., you know, whatever their last name was. Now, when I moved to the South, I learned the culture was just a little different. Oftentimes, it's Mr. and Miss, and you use the first name, and that's fine as well. There's nothing wrong with that either. It's what it is, it's teaching our children proper respect and reverence for their elders. It's the same for when you talk to someone who is a doctor. Generally, you won't just walk into your doctor's office and say, hey, what's up? And call them by their first name. You know, we treat them with proper respect. So we say, good morning, good afternoon, doctor, whatever their last name is. Or, you know, I was thinking of our local officials who I have a lot of respect for. You wouldn't just, you know, if you ran into them in town, and you, you would probably, some of you might, you might know them well enough to call them by their first name. But a lot of times we'd address our mayors, mayor so-and-so. And, uh, and that's just showing, or the governor, for example, if the governor showed up in here this morning, we wouldn't just say, hey, hey Bill, come on in. You know, we'd say, Governor Lee, come on in and, and join us. Well, what about how we address the Lord? If we would address elders in this manner, a proper respect and reverence, if we would address our county officials or our state and federal leaders with respect, should we not be careful to do so with the name of the Lord? The Bible says in Psalm 111 and verse 9, He sent redemption unto His people. He hath commanded His covenant forever. And this is what I want you to hear. Holy and reverend is the Lord's name. Now this point is what really hit me all week as I was preparing for this sermon. It's what, what I really thought upon more than anything is how easily I might use the name of the Lord. Now, uh, not, not, not in the way that we would normally think in vain, but just not properly giving it the respect that it deserves. To speak of God in an irreverent manner is to violate this command by taking the name of the Lord in vain. His name is holy and reverend. And I think that we should be very careful how we use those words as well. Those words as well, holy and reverend. We take the name of the Lord in vain when we use God's name irreverently. But we also take the name of the Lord in vain when we behave as hypocrites. We don't think of that as taking the name of the Lord in vain, but it, that's exactly what we're doing. When we take the name of Christians on ourselves because God has placed that label on us, we are Christians, those who have been set apart, those who have believed in Christ by faith and, and trusted in Christ and rested in Christ. We are Christians, and when we do things that don't resemble the name of Christ, do you know what we're doing? We're violating the third command. We're taking the name of the Lord in vain. This thing is so much deeper than just, you know, what we generally think of taking the name of the Lord. And when we hear actors or actresses use God's name in a blasphemous manner and it just pains our hearts. Yes, that's horrible. But this command goes so much deeper than that. Paul writes in Titus 1 verse 16 that many profess to know God but in works they deny Him. 
being abominable and disobedient and in every good work reprobate. What's, what's Paul writing about there in Titus? He says it's, it's not enough just to say I am a Christian. It's how we behave. It's how we submit to the Lord. It's how we submit to the Holy Spirit of Christ that He would have full control of our lives so that we don't violate the commands of God and that we love them. Paul also writes in Romans 1, verse 21, that when you profess to know God, but you glorify Him not as God, and you're not thankful for all of God's works in your life, you become vain in your imagination, and your foolish heart becomes darkened. So let's just keep up with this. We take the name of the Lord in vain when we use it irreverently. We take the name of the Lord when we behave as hypocrites. By saying we know and love God, but our actions do the exact opposite. And Paul says we take the name of the Lord when we don't, in, in vain when we don't glorify Him as God. He also says we take the name of the Lord in vain when we're not thankful for what God has done in our lives. Did you know that unthankfulness is a way to take the name of the Lord in vain? And we're all guilty of that. I know I am. How often I go the whole day and I don't even thank God for all the blessings of life that He's, for all the care, for all the protection, for all the love that He's blessed us with. How often I do that. Anyone else guilty besides me or am I the only one this morning? I would say if we searched our hearts, we would all say we have violated this command countless times. We also take the name of the Lord in vain when we treat His Word profanely. We confessed it in... Westminster Shorter Catechism, question 55. What is forbidden in the third commandment? The third commandment forbids all profaning and abusing of anything whereby God makes Himself known. And so when we profane and abuse the very Word of God because God makes Himself known to us by His Word, we are violating the third command. When we treat God's Word, when we don't treat God's Word as it is, the very rule of our hearts and the very rule of our lives, we are taking the name of the Lord in vain. When we talk loosely about Scripture or when we don't obey it or when we twist it maybe to support something in our hearts and our lives that shouldn't be there and God brings that to our minds and He brings that to our hearts and our thoughts through the preached Word of God but we ignore that, what are we doing but taking the name of the Lord in vain? When we ignore what the preacher says and what the Word of God says through the preacher, we are taking God's name in vain. You say, well, what about you, preacher? Trust me, this, this, these messages are on my heart all week long. And I listen to multitudes of other ministers to speak to my heart. And when I ignore their words through the Word of God, what am I doing but taking the name of the Lord in vain? When we don't come to worship prepared to worship God with a clean heart. Or maybe we don't come with all of our attention and care and love for Him. We are taking the name of the Lord in vain. How can we treat God so lightly when we claim to love Him so deeply? Do we treat those whom we love here on earth with, con with contempt or hypocrisy? Well, sometimes we do, I imagine. But if we really love someone, it pains our hearts when we treat them with contempt. Right? It was said of a dying husband that his wife came to him on his deathbed. He didn't have much time left at all. He had three sons and she gave him this shocking news. Just one of these sons is yours. But she didn't tell him which son was his. And he desired to know which one so that he could bequeath his whole estate to that particular son when he died. Well, the, the father did indeed die and the executors of the state set up his corpse against a tree and had the three sons shoot arrows at his corpse. Huh. That sounds a little bizarre, doesn't it? But they said the one that got nearest to the heart of the, the dead father would win the estate of the father. Well, two of them shot the arrow, but the third one refused. He refused because he was so pained at the thought of shooting an arrow at the heart of his father, even though his father had died. He just wouldn't do it. Well, I'm sure you can guess who was the true son. And that son was awarded the estate. 
And for the true children of God, it should pain us when we shoot arrows of irreverence or hypocrisy or unthankfulness or lack of worship at the heart of our Heavenly Father. That won't bother the unregenerate to take the name of the Lord in vain in these ways. But for the true child of God, we turn and we weep as Peter did when Jesus looked at him after he denied him. That verse always gets to me. It says that Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And Peter wept. Peter went out and wept bitterly because he denied his Lord. But remember, I said we're not just going to focus on the negative. Because when Peter went out after denying his Lord, we remember that Jesus came back to Peter with the gift of repentance. And Jesus came to Peter and and he said, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I do. And so are we thankful for that gift of repentance when God comes to us, even though we take the name of the Lord in vain time and time and time again? He says, Ryan, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I do. Yes, Lord, I do. It's not how I want to love you. And one day I will love him like he has called me to love him. But I love him. And it hurts me when I take his name in vain in these ways that we talked about. Because I know it hurts Him. Well then, finally, this morning, after all of that, I've been trying to keep the positive and the good news in front of us. But it's the positive aspect of the application of the third commandment. If we're commanded not to take the name of the Lord in vain, then by inference we're called to hallow His name, right? And what does that mean but to treat it with reverence and to treat it with respect. To think about what we're doing when we're serving our God and to think about what we're doing when we say we love our God. Do we, do we love Him? When He comes to us and says, do you love me? To think about that with our minds. Those very minds that often violate this commandment and take the name of the Lord in vain with our thoughts. God says, think about this with your mind. Do you love me? Think upon this with our hearts. Do you love Jesus? You say, yes, pastor, I love Him, but how many times I've violated this command? How can He love me? I don't understand it, but He does. Right? He died for you and me. He rose again for you and me to give us victory over these things. And even though time and time we go back to the well, is the old saying, and we go back to the well again and again and again and again, We come running to Him with repentance. We say, Lord, I love You. I just, I did it again. I'm sorry. We fight and we battle. We don't give up that battle. We don't ever stop putting on the whole armor of God. That's what we're called to do. And so our prayer this morning should be, Lord, help me to sanctify Your name. Help people to see You through me. Help people to be exhorted by me as I lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Help me to set apart your name for all that is good and holy and just and right. Help me to treat you with reverence and to treat you with respect. Help my actions to match my words so I don't behave like a hypocrite. Help my heart to prepare for worship and to not come in here each Lord's Day just out of repetition, just for tradition's sake, but help me to come in to be anticipating Your holy name. Help me to pray to You, my covenant God. Help me not to take Your word lightly. Help me to love You and may the thought of ever taking Your name in vain be like an arrow piercing my own heart because I know that my Lord Jesus was pierced for every time I have taken His name in vain. Lord, help us, dear God. The good news is Jesus Christ went to the cross for every violation of our third command, of Your third command. Every single one, Jesus went to that cross and took the punishment in our stead as our substitute. Give us the faith to believe this. Give us the faith to trust in Christ the risen Savior who died for our every sin and our every violation of Your command. 
and rose again to give us victory over these things. So help us to fight, O oh God. Help us to fight against this sin in our heart and our life. To battle it. Deliver us from evil. God, we can't do this without You. We can't, we can't even begin to think about doing the fight against sin and against our heart's desires and our minds and our tongues. We can't battle those things without the whole armor of God. So help us by Your Spirit to get up each morning and to prepare ourselves for the daily grind and for the daily battle that, that sin will throw against us and temptation will throw our way. Oh God, we need deliverance through the name of Jesus Christ. Let us exhort one another and encourage one another to stay in the fight, to stay in the battle as we've been talking about this very Lord's Day. Thank you for allowing us to gather this morning and I pray that you bless our, our song of worship as we go out in Jesus' name. Amen. The closing hymn is 203. 203, if you stand and sing. <coughs> Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Cast your care on Jesus today. Leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, 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 burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near, troubled soul, the Savior can see, Every heartache and tear, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary, burdens are lifted. At Calvary, Jesus is very near. Amen. Why are burdens lifted at Calvary? Because of what Jesus did for us there. So let us go out this week and think upon those things and to treat His name with holy reverence each day of this week. Lift up your hearts and receive the benediction of our great God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.